get started. All right, everyone got the recording <laughs> recording message. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Ashley Nance. I am the professional development manager for the Block Career Center. Uh, I know, of course, this is a busy time of year, but I'm so glad that all of you are here to talk through just introduction to resumes and kind of getting the best tips from our office about how to format your document. Um, as I mentioned in my email this morning, this is really kind of a work as you go type of workshop. So I encourage you, open up your documents, um, or if you're still at the beginning stage of your resume, open up a Word document uh, or a Google Doc and edit along. Uh, as I'm kind of talking through a lot of these things, um, absolutely um, make sure that you're just following along and, and making sure that your resume is fitting some of those core formatting principles that I'm going to talk through and a lot of what I'm going to be mentioning. Um, before we get started, I even wanted to actually share our website information. Um, we have a really great resume, um, resume page that has uh, resources on resumes and, and really kind of our top tips for how to not only format a resume, but also how to write action bullets and how to uh, write through your experiences. And we also have templates that you can use to develop an undergraduate resume or a graduate level resume, depending on where you are. Um, we also have resume samples uh, that you'll be able to see and can access. So let me go ahead and pop that link in here. So it's at our Career Centers page. Um, if you go to Explore Next Steps, they'll bring you to create a resume a cover letter, but I'm going to actually put in the chat right now that link so you can have it on your end as well. And as I mentioned, if you scroll down on this page, you'll see this career sources section and you'll be able to see all those different resources that I just mentioned. So those business resume samples and then this undergraduate resume template as well as the graduate resume template that you can use. These templates are really good that if you are in the beginning stages of developing a document, that really you have no idea where to start in terms of developing a resume, those templates are really a good start for you because it's going to set up that format um, for what our business employers are going to be looking for. Um, but also, if you just wanted to see typical formatting and what that looks like, um, this business resume sample document is a really good resource for that as well. All right, so we're gonna go back to my PowerPoint. Just to confirm, can everyone see my slides? Yes. Yeah. We're good? Okay, great, awesome. So um, I think all of you might know what a resume is, but I wanted to just kind of make sure that we are all on the same page about what this document might be. A resume is meant to be a marketing tool to really help showcase your education, your experiences, your skills to an employer that might wanna hire you, right? And so this is a way that you are able to show off who you are as a professional, who you've been or like what you've been working on, what your types of skill sets you bring to the table and what is your professional brand, um, essentially, like what type of professional are you? Um, but it also shows off why you would be qualified for the job. So I think there is a difference there, right? So it's not just about showcasing your educational skills and experiences. It's about also showcasing those things and why they're going to be relevant to the job. Um, that's a key thing that I don't think a lot of students pick up on when they are developing their resume. You have to make sure that it's tailored to your objective and to what you're wanting to be applying to in terms of jobs or internships and what employer um, that you're applying for as well. But essentially overall, and ultimately you're thinking, you're going to want to be thinking about what will make you stand out to employers. Um, what do you have in your profile, um, in your experiences, your skills, your education, that makes you unique and how can you put that on your document? So that's kind of where I come in and that's where our office and block career center comes in uh, to help you really kind of think about these things more broadly and how you can really talk about your experiences as well. So some of the challenges that we often hear from students and you might even have experienced this yourself, um, biggest competition or biggest challenges with resumes is one, beating the competition of course, and not just UMKC, peers that you might have within the university, but also within the block school, but also other universities around the country, and ultimately anyone who's applying for a job on the internet, right? So if you apply to a role through Indeed or Glassdoor, um, you are competing really against anybody. And so that's obviously a, one concern that a lot of students have, but also there might be workforce out there that has more knowledge than you or more experience than you. And so you have to be thinking about, okay, how can I really make sure that I'm showcasing why I would be a really good fit? 
and why I would be a good, um, good really uh, person that they should hire over this other person who might have more experience. And, but then also getting their attention is a challenge as well. So recruiters spend typically only six to 20 seconds um, actually scanning through your resume. And that's actually once you get past what are called applicant tracking systems. So applicant tracking systems are computers, AI, uh, that actually use an algorithm to track and filter out applications uh, to employers. So anyone who collects online applications most likely uses an ATS. Um, the applicant tracking systems, their algorithms are um, defined by keywords in the job description. So don't panic. Um, this is something that you can quickly get by um, and efficiently get by if you're using keywords and tailoring your resume and or your cover letter, which I can also talk through, uh, to that job description, um, because that ATS is really going to be searching for those keywords and how you might be most relevant to the job that it's searching for. So something to consider. Uh, whenever you're putting together your resume, you do want to make sure that it's really clean and easy to read too. Uh, so because um, recruiters spend such little time looking through your document, you want to make it really easy for them to quickly um, look at your document and see education, work experience, activities, languages, whatever you want to feature. You want to make sure that those things are top and center. All right, so then let's get into the format and what this typically looks like. So a typical order or preferred order for most of our students, whether you're an undergraduate or graduate, would be top of page is your contact information. So you would include things like name, email address, phone number, your LinkedIn URL, if you have a LinkedIn profile, uh, but then you can also include your address. I will say physical address is something that is becoming more and more less common. I guess less common more and more. Um, many employers don't really look at it anymore. And especially in times of COVID with so many people working remote, that physical address isn't ne as necessary anymore. But absolutely, you wanna make sure that your name, email address and phone number are on there because those are gonna be the top ways that a recruiter is gonna connect with you. Uh, next is typically your education. As current students, whether you're a graduate or an undergraduate student, your education is gonna be your most recent and really your most valuable asset. Um, for some graduate students, I would say you could put your education at, down at the bottom. It's just really about your career objectives and what you're wanting to pursue. But for undergraduates, for sure, your education should be up at the top. And I will talk through that education section and what it should look like, but at a minimum, the content that you want to include on that education section are your university, so University of Missouri, Kansas City, your major or emphasis area, but also your degree type. And that's really important because of course UMKC offers different degrees. You wanna make sure that you're putting bachelor of or um, masters of whatever that education level is for you. Your anticipated graduation date, you actually do not need to put the years that you've been going to UMKC, you just need to put your graduation date. Um, most recruiters when they're looking at your document, they only really care when you're gonna be available to work for them full time. <laughs> and so uh, just put that piece on there. And then you want to make sure that you put your location. So that city and state is important. I know with University of Missouri, Kansas City, it seems redundant to put it on there, but having that city and state makes that really easy for a recruiter. And then you can also put your GPA. So we typically recommend that if it's above a 3.0, that's, that's when you can include it. Um, you can usually put that right underneath, underneath your major. It's usually a bullet that you include right under the under there. Other works, uh, other sections that you can put on your resume. Of course, this is customized to you, right? And customized to what types of experiences you bring to the table. Um, but work and professional experience is a pretty common one. So work and professional experience can include part-time jobs. It can include internships. It can include um, even like kind of entry-level jobs like retail, customer service, food service jobs. It can include um, paid work experiences. So if you do work full time, you can certainly include that. So really anything that you've been doing that is, it can be called work or professional experience is what you can put that under. You can also include leadership experience. So if you are involved in a student organization, for example, on campus, and you have a specific leadership role, you can absolutely put that on there. Um, that is something that our recruiters love to look at and love to see how are you involved outside the classroom. 
extracurricular experience. So there's, I think, like activities. So if you are involved in a student organization, but maybe you are involved at a member level, you can put that under activities or extracurricular experience. Volunteer experience. So this is like UMKC or even community volunteer experience uh, where you maybe give your time, but you're not paid for that experience. Awards and accolades, this also includes things like honors or scholarships, dean's lists, things like that that you can include. And then finally, a skills section. And this would include mostly technical skills, so not soft skills. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like in just a bit. Any questions so far? Okay, so let's start with contact information and what that typically looks like. So I, I've just provided a, a fun little example with Casey Rue up at the top. Um, typically, you would have your name be a little bit bigger. And sometimes I've seen students actually bold their name to help it stick off the page a little bit more. That's very, very common. Um, you would, of course, like I mentioned, have that email address, making sure that it is professional. You can include a UMKC email address or a personal email address. I always just tell students, use whichever one you are most accessible at um, and making sure that it's something that you can easily see an email and reply to that email quickly. Uh, same with cell phone number. So making sure that it's a number that you can access, make sure that your voicemail message is really professional. Um, that's something that students sometimes forget about. Um, and they might have made like a, or recorded a joke voicemail message, but forget to put it on there when they, or delete it when they're applying for jobs. Uh, make sure that that is professional if you're going to have an employer call you. And then, like I kind of mentioned, LinkedIn URL is something that you can definitely put on there. Um, the mailing address is optional, becoming less and less uh, common. All right, let's talk in about education. So this is an undergrad example. I'll talk about graduate as well. Um, but there's really the, the, the big pieces on here are the most important pieces that are usually most less aligned. Um, you try not to right align any of this. Um, simply because in, in English, we read from left to right. And so this is how you want a lot of that information to be pieced out. Um, so with your education, I've provided three different examples here. You always want University of Missouri, Kansas City up at that top. Um, in the school, in the block school, you are either getting a Bachelor of Science in Accounting or a Bachelor of Business Administration with an emphasis area. So your degree should be reading like this, um, Bachelor of Business Admin or Bachelor of Science. Um, so wherever you, you land, make sure that you're formatting it that way. If you have an emphasis, you can put it underneath your Bachelor of Business Administration, or you can include it in the same line. So I've seen students say Bachelor of Business Administration, comma, finance, or comma, marketing, however you want to put that. That's totally fine. If you have a minor, you can absolutely put this on here. Many students pursue a minor or even a certificate. You can put that on your education section. And then you can see that anticipated graduation date is also included on there as well. Something to point out, I know I have it formatted right here where it's all left aligned. Um, typically, and you might see this on some of those business resume samples, these, the locations and the graduation dates are actually typically on the right side. And that really actually helps make this document really symmetrical and really helps fill up some of that white space so it's not always left aligned. Um, usually on the left side with the cursor information, you'll start with your bachelor's degree in University of Missouri, Kansas City, and on the right side, you'll have location and then your anticipated graduation date. And like I said, you can put a GPA if it's above a 3.0. Like I said, it just is under, underneath that education, either as a bullet or it's online. If you are accounting and plan to pursue a CPA, which is Certified Public Accountant, this is something that a recruiter is most likely going to ask you about. And so uh, definitely you can include your CPA eligible date, meaning when will you get those 150 hours to sit for the CPA exam? Um, absolutely, you can put that on your document because most likely a recruiter will ask you about it anyway. So um, it's just easy to have that information there. All right. So let's go on to graduate then. So this is typically what that looks like. Uh, if you've pursued your bachelor's degree somewhere else or wanted to include your bachelor's degree on your document, I think the most common example is the example on the right side where you have University of Missouri, Kansas City, your master's degree that you have, your graduation date, your GPA, and then you have your bachelor's degree listed underneath that, whether it's from UMKC or another institution. Uh, but you can also list it uh, like the examples on the, the left. 
You can have Master of Business Administration where you have that MBA or Master of Public Administration or whatever your graduate degree is in from Block. Uh, you can list it similar to that. What is important for both the undergraduate and graduate education pieces is that you write out those majors and degrees. Because if you remember at my, the beginning of my talk, I mentioned what are called application, applicant tracking systems. Those ATS are going to be looking for keywords related to degrees. So most likely those job descriptions are gonna be asking for someone who has a bachelor's degree or someone with an MBA or a master of business administration. And so in order to make sure that your document is getting picked up and making sure that the ATS is reading your education correctly, you need to make sure that you have that keyword listed. So don't be putting BBA, for example, um, and not writing that out um, or BSA. You want to make sure that you are writing out that bachelor's um, to be picking up those keywords. All right. I realize as I'm kind of going through this, um, I haven't really talked about fonts or font type yet. Um, when you're putting together your resume, your fonts really should be something that is clean and easy to read and looking very professional. The most common fonts are Times New Roman, Calibri, Arial, Helvetica, um, something like I said that is very professional looking. And in terms of point, um, of point size or font size, we typically recommend 10 to 12 point fonts. Um, actually, the most common is just 11 right in the middle. Uh, you can use that to format your document. All of your font size and types should be the same across your entire document with the exception of your name. So your name can be a little bit bigger, totally fine, um, but you do wanna make sure that the font type and size is consistent across the rest of your document. Especially for so many business areas, they really like that formatting to be clean and crisp. And so making it consistent is gonna be really important here. All right. So other exceptions for education are things like if maybe you received your, your associate's degree somewhere from a local community college, or maybe you studied abroad, or maybe you have other language skills that you want to include that have to do with your education, you can certainly put that on there as well. So that's absolutely something that is super common. And actually I would tell you, you should be putting that on there. Um, especially if you've received your associate's degree from another community college, or maybe you received your degree from somewhere else um, and you want to include that on there, you can put that underneath the education section. Excuse me. An exception to this is if you transferred in with credits but did not receive a degree. You do not have to put that educational institution on your document. You only have to put degrees from which you re have received or plan to receive in the near future. So if you went to KU for a semester and only took 40 credits and then you transferred to UMKC, you don't need to include KU on there. Um, the study abroad, of course, I think in times of COVID, it's not as relevant, but if you have studied abroad, you want to include that under your education, very common, certainly something that you can include. You would just format it like the rest of your education. All right. Any questions about education or anything that has come up as you're kind of looking at these examples? Pretty straightforward stuff. Cool. So let's dive into experience then. And uh, what are the types of things that you can put on there but want to be considering also when you're formatting your document? As I mentioned, your experience can include a variety of different things. So it can include the work and professional experience, which is mostly paid work. It can include leadership experience. It can include volunteer experience. Um, most common for so many students, it goes education and then that professional or work experience. When you're putting this information on your document, you want to make sure that you're including things like proper names of the company that you work for, proper job titles that you, that you had when you were there. Dates and locations are particularly important for when you work somewhere or, or where you work somewhere. But most important, when you are talking about what you did there, I want you to be thinking about your impact. So your resume should not be a laundry list of responsibilities that you did. I want you to be thinking not just of what you did, but what changed because you were there. What sort of impact did you have and what were the results of your actions or, or um, work? So I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples of this, but I want you to be thinking about um, not just your role, but okay, thinking about your responsibilities, but what happened because of that responsibility? What was the purpose behind me doing that, 
are you doing that responsibility and listing it on your document? What's also important with your with your bullets is also thinking about um, why this is relevant for the job you're applying for or how this could be relevant, especially if you have a role that is maybe not directly relevant to what you want to pursue professionally. That's perfectly fine. And I would say keep including that type of information on your document. But you also want to be thinking, what are some of the transferable skills that I may have had? Um, transferable skills are things like communication, teamwork, uh, adaptability, being able to work hard, skills that you maybe have um, gained in a variety of different settings, but can be transferable from job to job. Um, they're most often called softer skills, and they're often harder to prove. And so bringing them into experience sections and showcasing how you've used that skill through a particular responsibility or task is a fantastic way to showcase that skill. And I'll, I'll give you a couple examples of what that looks like in just a bit. So in the next few slides, I'm gonna show you some examples of an internship experience, but also a professional work experience. Um, so you can kind of see how this format works, but then also how you might list those different types of experiences on your document. So this is just an example uh, internship experience. You can see we have the company, the job title, the location, the date when that person was here. But every single bullet starts with what is called an action verb, uh, meaning so like establish, communicate, negotiate, attend. Um, it's an action-oriented verb that, that starts the bullet and starts to describe what exactly that role or task was, right? Um, but this person talks about their ability to work with clients, the ability to have customer service skill sets, um, but not just about like meeting with clients, but talking through, I was developing relationships here. Um, I was actually not just performing um, customer service duties by making calls or talking through our products, but I was communicating well with clients and I was trying to think of solutions to meet what their marketing needs might be. Um, same with like the third bullet, negotiate entire sales relationships from prospecting, cold calling, and so on and so forth. Um, you might not think of those things as like particularly important, but it does showcase how you might be establishing a relationship, right? Um, that, you, that task that you took on, even though it might not have been something that's directly relevant to what you want to do, you were still building a skill set and still helping to establish and have an impact on that company. And then finally, that, that bullet is just uh, building rapport with clients, that, that NHRA racing events bullet, um, just talking about, you know, I attended as a representative and it was because of this purpose or it was for this purpose. Um, it was to build rapport with clients. All right, the next slide is more work experience. So this is probably a good example of like maybe a part-time work experience or a short-term work experience. Um, this one is the course of the Kansas City Chiefs. I just pulled an example up. Um, but they started with things that they typically do, but really also started to think about, again, that impact. So a good example is that third bullet. So not just saying I, I led these tours, but I designed and customized these tours for this reason. Um, it was to make sure that I was bringing a good fan experience for, um, for the people in my tours and, and representing the Arrowhead Stadium well. Um, I really like the last one too, so collaborated and communicated with the team of tour guides. This is easily something that you can um, transfer over to a retail position or to a food per, um, position because almost all of us work on teams, right? And you can start building out these bullets to showcase how have you worked on a team and to what purpose, um, what types of tasks were you trying to accomplish together and were you successful and being able to include that on your document as well. All right, the next section I wanted to talk through is actually a leadership experience. Um, so I know, of course, many of you might be involved in student organizations on campus. And so this is how you can represent some of those things too. Depending on your experiences, you might put more bullets on these than others. Um, some students decide to just have maybe one or two lines dedicated to their extracurricular activities or leadership experiences. Some students include others. Um, definitely, I, if you feel like it's something that has taken a good portion of your life and you feel like you have a lot to talk about with the student involvement experience, talk about it. Um, it can be something that it could be just as worthwhile as a part-time position um, to some employers. 
So these are just examples of how you can showcase those things. I particularly like the Alpha Kappa Psi one. This, of course, would be a leadership role as president, but they're talking through, okay, here's what I did. Um, here, I managed the team, or I was able to set up for events um, and, and help run meetings and be able to have that information there as well. But what's important here is this really showcasing, here's what I've done outside the classroom. Here's how I've really been involved in these different student organizations. Same with volunteer experience. So this is just something that you can showcase. Uh, again, personal preference on how, you, how much you want to include here and how relevant it would be to your different job targets. Um, but you can certainly include this type of information on there. And then I also wanted to make sure we chatted through awards and accolades as well. Um, I know many of you might also be on honor roll or dean's list or anything like that. Maybe you've gotten a scholarship uh, to UMKC. So you always wanna make sure that these are in reverse chronological order, um, but you don't have to include everything that you've ever <laughs> received. Uh, typically the most relevant or the most recent things is most important. Um, just to keep your document fresh and keep it most um, focused on what the current application you might be applying for is. Um, something that I wanted to also mention is with all of your experiences by section, you want to make sure they're in reverse chronological order. So when you're thinking about your work and professional experience, start with what you're most recently doing or currently doing and going backward from there. But like I said, you do it by section. So work and professional experience would be one section, leadership experience, reverse chronological order, so on and so forth. All right. The last section I wanted to chat through is the skills and certifications question. So I know I mentioned a few times throughout this um, presentation that you do want to really stray away from having just softer skills listed in a skill section. And it's really because, like I kind of mentioned, those skills are hard to, hard to showcase and hard to prove. Um, and really, anyone can put on their document to say, hey, I have hard work ethic, or I'm really organized, or I have great attention to detail. Those are all really great skills, but they don't have a lot of credibility. And so I think when you do try to tie them to actual tasks that you've maybe taken on or um, different types of responsibilities you've had or even accomplishments that you've had, um, that's absolutely something that I think can work better in your favor and showcase those skill sets and make them more believable, I think, to recruiters. I put a phrase here, show me, don't tell me. Um, I'm not interested in just seeing your list of soft skills. I'm interested in seeing how have you demonstrated those soft skills um, and how can we showcase that on your, on your document. But um, as, I, as it's listed here, a lot of those skills tend to include things like technical or language skills, something that is more provable. So things that uh, you would maybe talk about in an interview setting or maybe even showcase to an employer through like a pre-interview assessment, um, something that they can easily kind of judge your proficiency on. Some common examples are what is listed here. So you can put Microsoft Office Suite, including Excel, really depending on the type of role you might be pursuing, Excel might be more important than others. Some students know HTML or Java or any other type of like programming languages, you can certainly put that on there. If you have language proficiency, you can absolutely put it on there. Um, and it's really typically listed like where it, like it is there. So fluent in whatever language, intermediate and others. You can put beginners um, in a certain language, depending on how you want to, to put that in there. I would say any skill that you put on your resume, be comfortable with talking about it. If you aren't comfortable with being ta with talking about it, don't put it on your document. Um, simply because anything that you put on your resume, you want a, a, an employer to feel welcome to ask you about in an interview setting. And so if you're not feeling super confident about your language skills, don't put it on there just for the sake of putting it on there. Uh, make sure that you're having stuff on there that you feel really good about, proud about, and um, secure and confident about speaking to in an interview setting. And then last uh, thing I want to point out is that, is that certification section. So that's certainly something. This is much more common in like graduate level type of resumes where you maybe have had some work experience um, or some like other very industry focused experience. And so you can put certifications certainly on your document if you have them either through your employer or through your own professional development, that's certainly something that you can include. All right. I forgot I did have one last slide and I apologize. Um, another common part uh, to put on a, a business resume are things like business projects. Um, I only recommend business projects if you want to include experience that is very, very, very relevant to what you're applying for, 
and you don't have another experience to really showcase that. So for example, if you are applying for a project manager posi or management position in an engineering firm, but you've never really worked in project management before, but maybe you've done a project management course at, um, within your MBA program or through your undergraduate program, that's where you can showcase that relevant class project. So if you've taken on projects that maybe really display that efficiency or competency in project management, you can showcase that um, like how it's formatted here. So you would just say the name of the course, the date, and then a couple of bullets about what exactly that course was. I will say projects, relevant class projects are still not going to be to the same caliber as an internship or that work experience. I definitely think employers are really going to focus more on those more professional experiences out in the industry, but I still think it is something that could be relevant, could help set you apart um, if you were needing it on your, on your um, document. It just really depends on each student and what type of experiences you bring to the table and what your career goals are. All right, any questions? I know that was a lot of me talking, <laughs> um, so I wanted to pause here and see if there's anything that maybe came to mind. Uh, maybe you'll, you'll eventually get to this, but, um, you know, there's always an option to, you know, submit something via like Dropbox or something like that, or, you know, just browse your files. Uh, should you save your resume as a PDF or just like a Word doc? Ah, uh, that's a great question. So I typically say send it as a PDF. Okay. And that is and mostly because um, those ATS systems can sometimes screw up formatting and your PDF will solidify that format formatting for you. I will actually also say that so many times I recommend submitting your documents as one PDF file. So having your cover letter, resume, and a list of references all in one really branded profile for you. Um, so not as separate documents, mostly because so many companies usually only have you include one file link. And so that allows you to include, of course, all of your materials rather than having to submit three different links. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, it also makes it easier to share. So if a recruiter liked your package, they could say, oh, hey, this is Brendan's package. Here's uh, here's that list and send it on to maybe their coworker. Um, that's and that's what we're hoping. Document. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So making it easy to share for them is really helpful. All right, so I wanted to also showcase how you can actually get this work checked. And if you're still kind of thinking, I wanna make sure that this is getting some other eyes on it, making sure that I'm, getting, I'm putting this document together well, um, of course, in Block Career Center, we're here to help. So you can actually schedule an appointment with us anytime, Monday through Friday. Um, again, my name is Ashley, but I also have Tess on my team who sees students um, and a handful of other folks that, that are available to see students as well and review those resumes. You can actually set up an appointment with us through Handshake. So that link that I actually shared at the beginning of the um, beginning of my presentation, it brought you to the Block Career Center's website. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's actually a whole schedule and appointment uh, button that you can use to log into Handshake, which is our career um, and internships management system. So it's also the job board for all of our uh, students. So it's really kind of a one-stop shop for you to know about as a student as well. Uh, but that's how you can access our appointments and schedule one that, that fits for your schedule. Um, as I mentioned, you can do that um, through Handshake. Uh, you have a free a free uh, profile that you can use at any time. We also have a resource that is available actually through Handshake called JobScan. Um, JobScan is actually a really super cool uh, uh, software actually. Um, they basically take your resume or cover letter and a job description that you submit to them and they scan both documents and see how well does your resume and cover letter fit into the job description and what the ATS might be looking for. And so JobScan is so helpful for helping you identify those keywords and helping you figure out what might be most useful for you. Um, what I like about JobScan as well is that when, you, when it gives you that little ranking or when it gives you the score of that scan that they, it did, it also gives you some guidance and advice on how to expand your, your profile better or how to expand your resume in a better way or, or what language or skills that you can include on your document to help make that score go up a little bit more and help your resume or cover letter get more noticed by, by an ATS system. So I really love JobScan. Um, it's available as a resource through Handshake. So our office, Block Career Center, we have purchased premium features for UMKC students. 
So don't go jo to job scan directly, actually. I know that URL is a little bit misleading, but you can actually access this through Handshake. It's under our resources tab. And once you go through Handshake, you can access all of those premium features um, just uh, through your UMTC email. So you can absolutely uh, use that. And honestly, it's one of the best resources that I think we offer for students. I myself have used it. My, I, I helped my husband get a job with it. So it's, it's definitely something that, that can be helpful and, and help you really target your document. And then finally, especially if you're if you're a new writer or you're not really sure where to start, uh, we do have the UMTC Writing Studio. So you can actually set up an appointment with them and have them go through a cover letter, help you get started on a draft for that, um, and help you write some of those bullets for your resume as well. Our office also helps with that. So don't feel like you can't come to our office for that. We do resume reviews and cover letter reviews all the time. Um, the UMKC Writing Studio, I think, is really helpful for students who really just are not super confident in their writing abilities and want somewhere to, to start on a draft at least. All right, so some parting advice that I have for you in terms of setting up your resume and getting your document all set together is just that it's always a work in progress. Your resume is meant to be an evolving document. It's something that you shouldn't be touching only once. I actually tell students, you should get your resume looked at once a semester while you're in school. Um, it also should be something that is never done um, because you as a professional are always going to be growing. As a student, you're always gonna be growing. You're gonna be getting more classes. Your GPAs are gonna be changing. Um, you might get internships, you might get jobs. And so every semester, my biggest piece of advice would be to review and reflect on what you did every semester and make sure that you're updating your resume as you go through your time at UMKC. Um, I think that's a good piece of advice even when you get into the professional world too, is that every year, make sure that you keep track of your accomplishments and the things that you've really done well and put those on your document and make sure that you're keeping track of those things. Be open to feedback and don't take it personally. Uh, so resumes, I think um, many people have opinions about them, um, but I promise you a lot of the guidance that we have received and what I'm telling you today is informed by so many conversations that we have had with recruiters and human resources managers about what they want to see in resumes and who they hire and why they want to look at that resume in particular. And so um, just keep it keep it um, objective, I think, and just, just keep it as this is a professional document. I want to make sure that it's the best looking document I have. How can I make that better? Get it reviewed, like I said, often. Uh, come to our office and get it reviewed and uh, make sure that you're looking at it often. And then, of course, be proud of it. So, like, that's something that I think students forget sometimes. Is they just think, okay, oh my gosh, this resume, I don't want to work on it. It's something that is, is giving me panic. Um, but you don't have to have it be that way. This is something that we can definitely help you with. So, you are proud of it. And it's something that you are confident in introducing to an employer. All right, um, any last questions? I, that's kind of the last of what I wanted to chat with all of you about, um, but is there anything else that had come up as you were looking through your own document that you weren't really sure about how to talk through or what to say? Uh, not necessarily, but I do have a question. Like if we just find ourselves on, on